Alright, what's up New York? How are you? Thanks for coming out here tonight. We appreciate it. Who has the first question? You knocked out Darren Till. You made uh, Leon Edwards eat the three-piece and the soda. You, um, you gave Mr. Askren the MGM Grand Buffet. What are you making Diaz eat? I'm going to give him my all, man, whatever it takes, you know. Um, he's, a different, he's a different caliber than the guys that you mentioned, and I've seen him pull through some tough situations and win those decisions, so... I got uh, I got I got whatever it takes, man. You know, if it's a buffet, or it's it's whatever it is, man. I'm I'm here for it, you know. So this is for the BMF belt, right? Is that really happening? Obviously, the two people here are well deserving of that title if it is going to happen. If that is the decision that was made, how did you come to the conclusion that hey, let's do this? You know, when, when Nate did his interview that night, he he basically said this is for the baddest motherfucker in the game. So, who got the fastest knockout, though? Who got the fastest knockout? Huh? He was defending the baddest motherfucker in the game. So, you know, this is one of those fights that after that interview, you know, it started to build a life of its own through the fans and the media and, uh, we, st we didn't seriously start talking about this fight till maybe a couple weeks later in, 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 in a matchmaking meeting. And I said to my guys, listen, tell me if I'm crazy, but what do you think about us actually having a baddest motherfucker in the game belt? And my guys loved it, and we started talking about it. So I went in with the design team at UFC. Right. We started to design it, and uh, I will physically have that belt when I come back to New York. It'll be ready. I smelled some weed earlier. Was that you backstage smoking? Man, I smelled it as soon as I came out here. It's you guys. From your perspective, how did it all come together? After I asked, when I uh, asked to defend it against Masvidal, I'm pretty sure it was a wrap right there. That's when it, that's when it started. I only asked that because it seemed like there was an offer for Masvidal to fight Usman as well but it seemed like he was more interested in this fight. You can fight for phony belts, or you can fight for the best, best motherfucker in the game belt. And how do you feel about the UFC actually making this title? Did you think that that would happen, or did you think you'd have to produce it yourself? You made it happen. No, I think it's, uh, yeah, my man, I made it happen, that's why. So you're okay with that? That's what it is. So you call yourself a badass motherfucker. How do you say that when you're a vegan? I'm harder than anybody here. What's up? in for is for for war let's kill and be killed like i always say the best warriors are the ones that are made for the best fights this is a dog fight ladies and gentlemen you got two bad motherfuckers going at it what a finish by masvidal fans should expect your violence one of the greatest knockouts you'll ever see top five welterweight jorge masvidal I had to show him that there's consequences sometimes. Forged in the Miami streets. There's some bad motherfuckers out there, you don't want to wake them up. We'll go toe to toe with the heralded West Coast War from Stockton, California. There ain't no gangsters in this game anymore. There ain't nobody who done it right but me and him. Nate Diaz. But he ain't no West Coast gangster. You know what I'm saying? This is for the baddest 
soccer in the game. Well, the economic center of the Sunshine State is a present-day haven for visiting beachgoers. There are sections of Miami that remain crime-ridden and violent, where UFC welterweight Jorge Masvidal came of age. Some parts of my life were a lot more humble than others. Some of the neighborhoods, too. I had friends that had gotten hospitalized. I, I, I'd seen a lot of things, so it was a little different in the street. A teenage Masvidal would show early promise in South Florida's version of the combat arts. One which was part of the Kimbo Slice viral video series, recorded at the dawn of the YouTube era. As you know, we always keep this thing on the DL. You know what I'm saying? This is strictly underground access here. There's a lot of times where I was nervous. You just don't know the elements that get brought into a street fight. Sometimes people had weapons. And at the end of the day, in the street, everything is fair. Everything is legal. It's just survive. That's only that's only real rules. Just survive. Instead of completing high school, whatever it takes. So oh, my this got to love it. My back. Masvidal would graduate to the pro fighting circuit, where a student of the streets could thrive. What a story! Literally fighting on the streets in the Miami street fighting circle. That's where he got his swagger. Everything is completely different when I'm a professional setting. And no wasted motion, Pat. Masvidal takes advantage of every space given to him. And there's a referee there. There's a doctor there. I'm not worried about that. There's no weapons in there. Nobody's friends jumping in. And Masvidal unloading. So when I fight, I'm not worried about nothing. Masvidal's career saw him become a mainstay of the UFC. Street fighter becomes mixed martial artist. And a pretty darn good one. Or he fought anyone. Oh, he tapped it! Anytime. Uh, he's lighting them up now. Anywhere. This guy was just born a fighter. It's in his blood. He's been around. Oh, yeah. my! Big combination on the way up! Not just in MMA. In backyards, like running into satellite dishes and stuff. Bare knuckle. Jorge Masvidal! He's an old-school guy who's been fighting that long. Boom! Slams him to the ground. But he's got new-school skills. Masvidal looking to finish! This dude is embracing the bad guy. Love me, hate me, watch me perform. The landscape ripe with decorated athletes from all areas of the martial arts world. Masvidal is one of the few remaining fighters. Cerrone in a world of trouble here. His roots lie in the streets. There is a new welterweight contender, folks. I'm a real fighter. Dana White, bring me somebody. They can beat me. The other hails from Stockton, California. a city that has been economically depressed for generations. But even before financial crises brought rampant foreclosures and increased crime rates, the region rarely had much to take pride in. Save for their homegrown heroes, Nick Diaz, and his younger brother, Nate. School. I remember my brother coming to watch me fight at a park. It was already a dramatic thing from the beginning because it was like third period, fourth period, fifth period, like built up, built up, built up, and then you go to the park and there's a hundred people at the park that you're walking up to to watch you fight. So it already got started right there. Got line of parks in the ninth grade. After it was all over, the cops came and broke it all up. Everybody went to different ways. My brother was going to train like he normally did. And he was like, you better come with me to the, and train with that ass performance you put on earlier at the park. Before I knew it, and they were like, hey, you're fighting. From that happy-go-lucky and smiling Diaz family, <laughs> it's Nathan Diaz. It's 21, 22, 23. I'm fighting three to five times a year. He is really learning everything there is to know about MMA. He's not going to get out of that. No, he's not. I didn't even realize a better career was happening. Diaz! Outstanding performance by young Nate Diaz. Nate Diaz by submission. It's our division. We 
gonna beat your asses, that's for sure. Diaz just relentless. Nate Diaz has arrived. Spectacular in every single aspect of the game. 209. Got you, Cali, baby. After a decade spent facing top competition in the UFC, Nate Diaz becomes the first man <laughs> to stop Jim Miller. Diaz noticed the game of all. This is the beginning of the McGregor era. In a span of just two years, Conor McGregor has gone from relative unknown to superstardom. Sport blended with entertainment. This guy is a dead man walking. A new athlete could achieve superstar quickly. He's most certainly the biggest star in MMA by a long shot. What he's been able to do in such a short period of time has been nothing short of magnificent. There's been ways that these people, but nobody's been fighting top 10 fighters the whole time. I've been in a high level since I started. This might be the best shape we've ever seen him ever in his UFC career. He's taking it very seriously. Diaz saw the credit he deserved being misdirected. It was about time to collect. Nate Diaz! Conor McGregor, you're taking everything I work for. I'm going to fight your ass. You know what's the real fight, what's the real money fight is me. He would punch his long overdue ticket to the spotlight. Nathan Diaz come a long way from being Nick's little brother. Back-to-back -to -back billions against Conor McGregor. Tremendous pressure by Nate Diaz. Diaz is going off. Completing his journey from the bottom to the very top. For Jorge Masvidal. He, too, was ready to capitalize on a life's work in the fight game and would recently identify his own way to break through. I'm the split decision king in the UFC. I have the most split decision losses. And I go, how about if I had won that fight? Where would my career be? Then I said, why the hell am I thinking like a peasant, like so petty? How about if I just ended people, no decision? separate myself from the pack. Only way to do that is to end individuals. So that being said, <sighs> fools are getting baptized, man, from here on out. Darren Till fights back on UK shores after coming so close to realizing his dream of wearing UFC gold. Jorge Masvidal is here. He said he wanted a top 10 opponent. He gets one. In his last two outings, Boss without certain, put the game on notice. Oh! Oh! He's out! Oh, I imagine I'll get a massive knockout win. A devastating knockout of former title challenger Darren Till paved the way for a summer showdown with undefeated grappler and confident trash talker Ben Askren. So we got George and, uh, you know, now he wants to put on this role as though it was his idea to take the fight. It definitely was not. He was trying to do everything he could to avoid it. This guy's weak. There's no way he could ever beat me. He just doesn't get it done when it comes to those fights that will put him over the hump. They need to keep the idiot away from me. He's that dumb, and I don't want any chances that he's going to do something stupid before the fight. Bye-bye, Georgie. Oh, man, is George going to get at the face off? It's going to be so funny. How do you beat him? Any way I want. What's happening, Vegas? Ain't got nothing to say now. We ain't got nothing to say now. Well, I don't like this dude, man. I want to break his Face, man. I want to break his rib cage. His muscles aren't very big and his beard's pretty ugly. But besides that, I think it's going to be total domination. Askren, the favorite, as you'd expect. Jorge Masvidal, a live underdog, according to many tonight. All right, so here is the number five ranked welterweight in the world, Ben Askren. He has injected so much energy and flavor into this welterweight division since signing with the UFC. He's going to grab you and squeeze your head. He's going to put that grip strength on you, and you're going to get confused. He's going to hit you with that funk, that weird wrestling, and you're not going to know what to do. Absolutely. Ben is a freak of nature when it comes to the grappling and the wrestling. I'm excited to see how he handles it against somebody who's been in this octagon many times, like Jorge Masvidal. Undefeated in the streets. And making the walk for his 47th professional fight here tonight, Jorge Gamebred Masvidal. Fighting out of Miami, Florida, Jorge Gamebred Masvidal! And these guys just 
clapping gums at each other. Any chance Let's go, they get? Ready. Buddy, you ready? Fight! The fight clock is brought to you by Mojo. Oh! UFC 244's main event will feature Latin welterweight Jorge Masvidal, whose Cuban father, Jorge Sr., made his way to Miami, Florida in the early 1970s when he fled from the communist rule of the Cuban government. Muchas gracias. This is the Cuban way. Cuban coffee and a cigar. A los cubanos. My father made his way to the United States a very daring, brave way. He got uh, tires from tractors, and they made him into a, a boat, a raft, and just took off, you know? At that time, they was taking you to the army, and they was preparing you to send you to Africa to fight. And I don't know fight for no communists, man. I am against everything is against communists. They are no good for nothing. So I decided when I was 15 years old to come to the United States. For my weakness, his belief was so firm that he was willing to risk his life for it. I can't imagine how much emotion he really has because he's not very good at expressing. I could just see it in his eyes. He doesn't like to talk about things like that too, but he sees me and uh, his eyes light up every time, you know. He's so proud of me, man. It's crazy how much he loves me. Jorge Masvidal Sr. has always had reason to be proud of his son. But it was the most recent knockout victory that would send shockwaves across the MMA universe. Oh! And One of the greatest knockouts you'll ever see! The American Top Team product is getting more recognition than ever before. Oh, we've got a bad boy fighter from the streets of Miami with us. Yes, we Indeed. are joined by... Yeah. One of the hottest fighters yes. the UFC has ever seen, yes. Jorge Masvidal. Dear Mr. Jorge Masvidal, I am a huge fan of yours and have been for years. You are one of the greatest fighters on the planet and one of the best ever. Appreciate that, my brother. For a long time, nobody knew who I was, just a very small core group, so I think it's awesome. It's been a long time it was the perfect storm, really, to catapult George to another level. Your entire five-second fight so it has sort of become the stuff of legend. He comes out and gets the fastest KO in UFC history in devastating fashion. Why does he look like he's sleeping on the job? Somebody tell me. <laughs> Why'd they ever put this guy in there with me, primo? It was a pretty amazing moment. Masvidal just made a statement. That dude was talking wild, man. I had to show him that there's some bad <laughs> out there. You don't want to wake him up. George, by your definition, what is a bad A couple ways you could describe it, but I would say somebody more than anything true to themselves. I love to do this to people. Freeze them up, you know? That's why I love competing. Ready, one, two, three. I love to do that. It's my gift to the world. For those seconds that I captivate your mind and you're just speechless, mm, you're welcome. Am 
I the only one in the room afraid? I mean, I'm genuinely afraid. <laughs> Masvidal's crowning achievement took place while Nate Diaz was on the shelf. Amidst the hiatus that spanned nearly three years. But he was always active at the Nick Diaz Academy in Stockton, preparing for an inevitable comeback if he could just find a worthy opponent. I was trying to get a fight. And I won a big fight, I didn't want no Joker fight, you know? A lot of fights I've lost because somebody's held on to me real tight and this, or ran from me and, and kicked at me and ran and grabbed a hold so that they were just stopping the fight from happening. And I'm sick of these lame ass guys trying to not fight. You can have a guy that's 50 and 0, you know, but if he's fighting the clock and not the other person, then, then nobody's really ever going to care. It's all about real warfare. That's what I grew up training in under Caesar Gracie Jiu Jitsu and Nick Diaz's army. We're going for the finish by any means. So I might as well fight guys who are trying to take me out. Former lightweight champion Anthony Pettis. It came out of nowhere. Is one of the most breathtaking finishers in UFC history. That kid is so talented. And his continued success got the attention of Diaz. He's a real fighter. He, he's been in the game. He's trying to finish people and take them out, and he's got good fights. Anthony Showtime Pettis. Whoa! And that's what we got. It's hard to recall a more anticipated recent MMA return than Diaz get back on the proven ground tonight. Nate Diaz is a fighter's fire. He loves to scrap, and he relishes combat. He now awaits the man they call Showtime. The man who has a highlight reel that stacks up with any fighter in the game. It's not just flash, as he puts it. It is flash with some serious substance. Wild stuff that comes out of nowhere and a full range of techniques. And if you take him down, no picnic on the ground either. He's just got a full range of skill. Finally, out of Stockton, California. They have been on each other's radars for nearly a decade. It is the 4-1-4 versus the 209 Nate Diaz ending his near three-year layoff here tonight. You ready to fight? You ready to fight? Hell, let's go! Diaz with a lot of pressure. Pettis caught him, though, with the right hand there. Oh, there's that high kick. Pro Diaz crowd trying to get behind their fighter. This is where Diaz can get up the most. If he can turn it into a dirty boxing match, take the kicks out of the equation. Mark him there! We're in your space, Nate. He can also try to exhaust him and slow him down. Diaz has a solid ground game. Pettis gave up his back. He gave up his back. This is huge for Diaz. Stop! The first round was great by Diaz. We'll see how he adjusts. Nate is doing a good job of staying on top of him, smothering him, making it difficult for him to uncork those shots. Pettis looks like he's fading a bit. Oh, oh big elbow. The Diaz brothers are both known for having sensational cardio. Big knee up the middle, a right hand by Nate. Now an elbow from Pettis. Oh man, this is phone booth warfare. Wow. Pettis slumps down. He's exhausted. One day I'm gonna die. Thank you with me. Stand up, please. Come on, let the team can put me in the ground, but the storm will swell, you'll see. All right, on the third final round. Hell, let's go. Here we are, right back in the phone booth. Diaz loves this style fight right here. This is his world. This is what he lives for. When he sees you fading, it gives him energy, like right here. The volume. Beautiful left hand by Diaz. Another right hand. A left hand. Oh, spinning back to the elbow. Oh, oh, he got him. Those oh, knees are heavy. For Diaz. Oh, Huge 
huge knees. Huge knees. Oh, Pettis, Pettis is in is trouble. Down. Because everybody sucks. There was nobody to fight. But Jorge Masvidal had a good last fight. Good last fight. There ain't no gangsters in this game anymore. There ain't nobody who done it right but me and him. So I know my man's a gangster, but he ain't no West Coast gangster. You know what I'm saying? Oh my goodness, would that be fun? Oh, please make that happen. He's been in the game. He's trying to finish people and take them out, and he's got good fights. It's a worthy opponent to me. I want to be involved in real fights. Right. Because I'm a real martial artist, and I want to fight real martial artists. If anybody wants some of it, come get it. Just let these two go at it. Everybody wants to see it. They're both going to scrap. Either of them are going to lay down. Until then, everybody needs to step their game up. You got to recognize who's the best of the best in this game, and it's not who they're saying it is. It's who I'm saying it is. Motivation is rarely in short supply. For lifelong fighters like top five UFC welterweight, Jorge Masvidal. But he always welcomes an added push. I was a lint. From one of the first mentors he's ever had. Striking coach, Paulino Hernandez. Not only did he mentor me in, in sports, but in life, he put me in the right path. And I mean, there's not a day he doesn't call me and make sure that I'm on the right path. You know, there's a lot of times where I'll get to a practice and it's the second practice or the third practice of the day. I'm like, ah, I don't got it in me. Paulino will look me right in my soul and tell me, no, we're, we're going to find it. Gancho. Doble gancho. Ya yo la cara. In all their years together, Masvidal and Hernandez have never prepared for a fight as big as the headliner that awaits them on November 2nd against an opponent who needs no introduction. I'm not fighting Joe Blow. I'm not fighting a dude that's doing it for the camera. Nathan Diaz, I know he's coming to fight, man. This guy would find me just as hard if 10 people are watching, or the whole world is watching, or if it's just me and him in a parking lot. Pain and fatigue are not gonna be a question. So when you add those components, we're talking about we gotta fight. Stupid. You like violence. The circus show comes yeah, in the town, Madison to Square Garden. You want to see some wild animals? November 2nd. Tune in. A coach and student relationship is often necessary for guiding fighters from street life to professional prominence. For Nate Diaz, that tutelage came under boxing instructor Richard Perez. Right hook. Right hook. Who is constantly helping the next generation evade the trappings of Stockton proper? Where's that left hand supposed to be? That's it. Keep that left hand up like that. There you go. I know people come from Stockton and come to my gym to train their kids because they're being bullied, it's been jumped. No, look at when you throw, bring it back here. You're doing this. Just leaving this open, leaving this open. You want to do this? 
There's a little kid who comes you would not believe. He's real timid, and he beat up a kid because the kid was bullying him because he learned how to box. And that makes me feel good. When you throw that right uppercut, come back with that left hook. Yeah, and then turn, yeah. That I could have at least one person, they're, they're, nobody's picking on him anymore. Oh, he boxes. You know, that's, that's all, if that's all it takes, I'm happy. Perez concludes most of his days by welcoming local hero Nate Diaz for an evening session to prepare for his next fight. But some days, Diaz trains on his own accord. Instead of a pad workout with Perez or jiu-jitsu training at the academy, Diaz takes to the dead of night. It's 11.15 now, I'm sure. I'm sure we'll be here all night. <laughs> We're just getting started. For the most part, I just I just get up and get done what I gotta get done. Sometimes it's all through the day. Sometimes it's all through the night. How's it going, guys? Let's see it. talking to myself over and over and over all day long. And you know what I should do after this fight? F him do this, or get this, or call, get the McGregor fight. And I've never planned on saying any of those things. But when Joe Rogan's holding your mic, asking you a question, what happens is, is just the truth comes out. Yeah, Conor McGregor, you're taking everything I work for. I'm gonna fight your ass. So how about, here's the thought. Oh. Pettis is in trouble. Let's just show everybody who's the baddest in the game. And it's me. I'm saying that right now. I'm going to defend it against this Jorge Masvidal had a good last fight. Good last fight. So I know my man's a gangster, but he ain't no West Coast gangster. And now everybody sees it. They feel it. They believe it. And then they're making us belts and shit. This is for the baddest in the game. So... I said to my guys, listen, tell me if I'm crazy, but what do you think about us actually having a bad in the game belt? Oh! Nate Diaz has never looked better. And I will physically have that belt when I come back to New York. It'll be ready. Of all the bad mother efforts that they seen walk through the doors of the UFC. Oh, my was all the guy that just lost the fight, man. He is 100% sure that this is his time. They deemed this fight the two baddest that they ever seen, so let's get it. You can fight for phony belts, or you can fight for the best, best m in the game, though. On November 2nd in New York City, Big D up the middle, right hand by Nate. Two world-class welterweights spread by Kung. That was a brutal, brutal knockout. Realize the culmination of a life's work. Nathan Diaz takes care of business. From the streets to the octagon. And from backyards to the Mecca. When the dust settles at UFC 244, the baddest man will rise. Training hard, training to go for the kill and get the job done. I'm coming to end somebody. They know he's not going to take a step back. What happens, you know? Let's see. Yeah. Woo! That's what you need to get a shot of. Oh, so yeah. 
Hey, who's not getting a shot back there? Inform me. Somebody saying no? Throw their asses off. Who's, huh? Hey, 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 hey. you got to take that bad boy. Hey, everybody. Start of a great, great, great week. Here we go. Let's do it. Bottoms up. Victory, 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 victory. Oh, look at this punk, man. Nobody played dominoes where I grew up. No, we just used them to like, like knock them down, you know? That's it. Yeah, I didn't know how to play the game. Yeah, yeah I got a ton of respect for him. I love what he's done. I love how he competes. I like how he carries himself, you know? <laughs> At the end of the day, he's a dog. When he gets in that cage, he might not be the most athletic, the smartest, the fastest, but he's one of the biggest dogs ever set foot in the cage. And that's one of my, it's one of my biggest things that I like to see in the fighters, how much dog they got in them much they're willing to take pain and give out the pain, you know? And that's what excites me most about this fight. I can hit this guy with a baseball bat. He's not going nowhere. Give my 20 beans. Ah! Pain is up. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Right, you guys keep pitching together and buy my lunch. The only juicing permitted by USADA. To all the cowards that got the fake muscles, the time is coming. The truth will find you every time. That's why I love this fight, because there's another mother like me that I firmly believe. When I saw that bull that, that he was on that thing, I didn't believe it for a second, you know? From performances, body types, we could tell. When you've been in the system long enough, you could tell. And I stand by it. I think that dude's clean as, as it gets, you know? But to the other cowards and mother out there just ra 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 saying I'm clean this I'm clean that and everybody knows you ain't clean somehow you beating the system the system will catch you if not I will either or will do you guys are gonna have fun today trying yeah what are you guys doing he's an Arabic pop singer oh really yeah, yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> no because oh, I'm the one type yes I am actually you might have heard some of my songs if you speak Arabic no no I, speak Arabic. Oh. I can teach you if you want Okay. <laughs> one Arabic. One Arabic Something word? Um, uh, well, lachme is meat. Lachme? Lachme. So nice to lachme you? No, meat, not meat. Oh, like, like, meat. like eat meat. The oh. one that you eat. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the right word. <laughs> but it'll do, though. They'd understand. You could say it too. <laughs> What's another good uh, Arabic word we could teach the young lady? Yalla, yalla, imshi, imshi. Oh, like, the yeah. He's the singer. I'm just his bodyguard. <laughs> That's why I really don't know Arabic, as you can tell. Okay. <laughs> oh, there's the people I took the picture with. Those are the people we took the picture with yesterday from England. Yesterday. A family flew all the way in from England, and uh, they were telling me about my last fight in England. And they're like, man, we were here to support you. We love it. And we talked for like a minute or two, and we took some pictures. And then they were waving at me. And at first, I just thought it was like random people waving. And then I recognized them because it was like a whole family of them. Now, that's pretty crazy, just uh, the chances that I run into them again. It's a sign of good luck, I think. They're bringing that England good luck over here, baby. Woo! You're a real legit killer, bro. Hey, keep bro. shining, keep doing your thing, you're blessed, bro. Take care of this guy, I will, I will. Take me outside of the show. Thing. Take care outside of the show. Thank you, man. You got it, man. Look. Mueve mucha suerte en tu pelea. Nah. Where are you people from? Where are you? Italy. Italy. Italia. Buongiorno. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao, Bella. Oh, uh, wear the, the tailored suits and get my people outfitted nice. Got B-Hop over there. I even made the wall myself, man. Dana made the wall. He's the winningest heavyweight champion in the UFC history. Most time in the Yeah, he's got a bunch of records. He's knocked out people. Oh, wow. The fastest knockout in the UFC. That's why we're both brothers. You know? True, true, yes. If my dad could be in a tank top and flip flops, 
boxer briefs on all day. He's the happiest dude in the world. I had to kind of strong arm him to come here. But if his son's gonna be looking fly, so is Papa Dukes. I would do like the patch. One. Patch, okay. So what about this one? So let's do this. Patch. Let's do this in brown patch and this one like this one. Yeah. Uh, Christmas came early, I guess. So I'm happy. We'll see. We'll see. Looks, seems, and sounds everything great. We'll see. Right, like this one looks yeah. pretty nice. Look at that. Anything that catches your eye, you could just leave it flapped up. I try my best. I'm not good at this. This is not my forte. This is out of my wheelhouse. Hey, Mike, are you getting married? Why are you so nervous? Mike, are you getting married? I'm right. He's been asking for it all day. Smile, smile, Mike. Stop looking at my ass, Andre. You ready? You don't ask Andre that on fight week, yeah. man. <laughs> Victor, this is not the guy you play. This is a wild tiger. You leave that well, tiger I mean, alone. I've seen him fight, so I mean, I know. Yeah, but he's like that always. You leave that tiger alone. Fight, right? You see nobody sitting next to him because we all know how he is. Uh, I've always been a firm model of uh, the same. The man makes the clothes, not the clothes makes the man. So I could wear anything, man. New York, New York, big city of dreams. What's up, man? How you doing, brother? Good, my brother. How you doing? We're coming to support, like yeah. we said. We'll be there on Saturday to yeah, represent. Yeah. Best yeah. of luck. Hey, how are you? We got your back, bro. <laughs> Can't wait to come to Miami to celebrate. Oh, I, know, I know where he wants to go. Fight studio, hold the work, guys. Jorge Masvidal is back ahead of this weekend. A huge fight. UFC 244 versus Nate Diaz. What can we expect to see Saturday night? Pure violence, a baptism. Somebody's going to sleep for a while. You know, I just, I, I know what I have to do. I know my part, my role in this world, and that's just to provide pure entertainment via violence. So that, that's it. If that's your cup of tea, tune in November 2nd, you know? What kind of mentality will you be in when you're actually stepping in that night? Take everything from him, give him nothing. That's, that's one of my models that I have in my mind. I'm, everything he has, I, I want it. I'm taking it all. He's a kingdom, and I'm with my kingdom behind me. I'm knocking at the gates, and he's going to give me everything he's got, you know? Outstanding. Well done. Jesus. <laughs> Go get it, my man. Yes, Go get it. Good luck. Holy smoke. Five. Four, three, here we go, guys. You guys are both heavy volume strikers. What kind of fight are you expecting? You got two animals, two of the wildest dudes on the planet getting locked up in a cage and just going at it. We're gonna find out who's a little wilder, who's a little bit less domesticated, you know? Looking at your whole look, your demeanor, your background, the dude who you remind me most of, Roberto Duran. Can you tell me something about any influence he may have had on you? That's the most humbling thing anybody's ever told me. No, my look is just me. Is it, this is how God made me, you know. But the fighting style, definitely. A lot of my inside fighting, a lot of the tactic, and how he likes to break guys down and just beat them up and torture them. I love that, man. And uh, I, I definitely draw a lot of inspiration from Mr. Duran. So what is it about Jorge Masvidal that you've seen, that you thought to yourself, I'm going to get myself back in here and, and, and Well, compete. even before that, uh, when, when the UFC was talking to me about people, everybody was stagnant. It's boring. It's like uh, the champions were analysts. I'm like, what am, I, what am I gonna do? I don't fight analysts. I'm not into that. So I'm like, what am I gonna do? Go and jump in and just fight this guy who's really good, but no one's giving him any credit for. So as soon as they're, they had him not even still, they were trying to give the other guy credit. And then when he went out and did it, how he did it was. See, that's what I'm talking about. And yeah. Everybody, now we're like, okay, he's the guy. I'm like, all right, now we got a guy on our hands. Uh, uh, wow. G unit. <laughs> this is a way better picture than my last fight. Yeah, sure. <laughs> All good? Yeah, how are you? All right. Uh, it just. Any it's questions or anything you want to talk about? Or we're all good. No, all good. Yeah. All good. Yeah. We're all good. We're all good. We're all good. We're all good. All right, man. Have a good week. <laughs>
but like the only time in the second. Okay. Can't believe a grown ass man wears his hat like that, and that one hurt me. He <laughs> 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 was already like, man, I wonder when somebody's gonna ask me where I wear my hat. <laughs> I see my like pictures of me from when I was 16, 17, I got my hat on the same way. <laughs> I remember UFC 100. I was doing a signing. Vegas. It wasn't in Vegas. They had like an expo. 100? For 100? Yeah. Oh my God. I was like, damn, we're at UFC 100. That was in 2009. 2009, 2010, yeah. Tell me your favorite memory when you were trick or treating as a kid. I remember one time we went to this house and they gave us bananas and we felt so played. We were just real little though, and we felt so played, so we had to, we had to throw the bananas back at the house. <laughs> we're just little kids though. Bravo, great answer. Hey, we smashed the car with the bananas too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't need these <laughs> Hey, Jeff, you're gonna have to go I don't want to talk bad about the dead, so I'm not even going. You guys, y'all you, know, respect to the dead, man. Cinco segundos, and some say three seconds. We're getting that appeal, dude. We're going to get it at three seconds. Oh! What do you think his weakness is coming into this fight? Yeah, I think his heart is one of his strengths, but his stubbornness and his willingness not to take no as an answer could be a, could be a mistake of his, man. I, I might be setting up traps, you know? You guys know I, I like to set up traps and then uh, take full advantage of them, so that could be a, a big mistake for him. Make sure you're not on your phone on Saturday, you're not making popcorn or nothing. It's gonna be violence from the start to finish. Talk about this fight, man. There's so much mutual respect for you two guys. I mean, does that change the energy or the feeling versus other fights when, when you had that no. much respect for the other guy? No, not at all. I'm, I'm here to do the same thing that's damage. That's turn the off button on him, make him short circuit. Put him in outer over because it uh, it's, it's really for me and my family, my legacy. And the only way to separate myself from the pack is to send these people to another dimension. You know, there's only one way to do that. Do you have to be careful not to go for the finish in rounds one and rounds two in case he can be there in round three, four, and five? That's that's not me, man. That that wrong guy you're asking that to, man. I'm I'm there to hurt every second of every minute, and every minute of the round. And if he survives what I got to give him, my hats off to him. You know, but there's a dog here, and when this dog gets tired, it's only going to keep biting more. I'm not going to take a step back from nobody. There's not a fight you could pull up where me getting hit or me getting tired, I'm backing away or shying away from a fight. I'm a dog, and once that cage is locked, I only know one thing, one speed, you know. Thank you, man. I appreciate this, coach. Honestly, you're the man. I mean, we're here for another fight, you know? We're here for war. I really had a connection with Nick and Nate. I feel like they've always been looking out for each other and their team has always been really close. So I think there's a big a help that we do with each other. We're always looking out for each other. War is always the same, you know, no matter which way you slice it. And uh, ready for anything. <laughs> yeah, Madison Square Garden, backstage. Bye. Guys, 209's in the building. Make some noise for Nate Diaz! <laughs> nice reception here, Nate. How you feeling? Feeling good. Here to fight, here to do my thing today, this week. You certainly have a lot of support here in New York. 
I know you're representing the West Coast, but what does it feel to have this type of reception? Uh, it's good. It's great. I love the support. And, um, yeah, the whole East Coast, West Coast thing was just to start a fight with a guy. It's all gravy <laughs> with me. Hey, it worked out. West Side, mother What's up? I'm sick of talking to everybody. <laughs> so, Dan, you basically will be the BMF title into existence. And I'm sure you want to keep on defending it. But, Dan, what is it this to not Look, any, anybody who fights me, it's gonna be like this. This, this, this is what, this is what it is. You know, baddest mother. That's what it, I already am. It don't need that. I was just letting it be. No, now it's on a large scale. Win, lose, belt, no belt. Every fighter fight is gonna be the biggest fight. Baddest mother. Cause I ain't fighting no suckers, no more, anymore. I said that years ago, just not to you guys. So I ain't fighting no more suckers. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Hey, it's good talking to all you guys, man. All right, West Side. My yeah, I hate that. Nate, can, I, can I get an autograph yeah. from the big fan? Oh, that would be. Cool shirt, dude. Heck yeah. He's your biggest fan. <laughs> right before his tournaments, he thinks of you. Thank you so much, right, Nate. Guys, nice to meet you. Where are you guys from? There's just a lot of people here. It's crowded. Everybody's bumping into each other. It's overcrowded, so it's kind of crazy. What's up, yo? I got money on you, man. I'm betting my red money. Let's go, baby. Yeah, there's a lot of crazy ass people out here. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm flying from Korea. Can I take a picture with you? Thank you, man. Good luck on the fight. Can I take a picture too? Don't let me hang it down. Love from India, man. Thanks, man. It's cool that we're all here together, and uh, it's cool to like come as a team with the team. Usually when I'm out traveling by myself or something, it's not as cool as being with everybody. My boy Jose is fighting next week in uh, Iowa, so we're just going to be over in Iowa next week. So it's like one to another. One of these other guys turn the next week. Kron just fought a couple weeks ago. This is the name of the game. Brett Okamoto with ESPN alongside Nate Diaz, who takes on Jorge Masvidal in the main event at UFC 244 this Saturday, Madison Square Garden. What's different about your life and even you as a fighter? Do you feel like you're getting what you deserve? Do you feel like you're getting the accolades and the attention? <clears throat> this is only strong survival, shit. you know, survival of the fittest type of, type of thing. And that's my attitude since the beginning is I'll be here till the end of time. If I wasn't on a stage as big and doing something, I'd be demanding it or making it happen some type of way. So, uh, we're here now, and uh, see, I'm just trying to get the job done. Hey, how much of this fight is about your legacy going you know, down the history of the baddest man in the UFC? It already is, I feel like, you know? I'm still here after however many years. I've been, been in the UFC since I was 21, and I'm 34 now. And uh, I feel stronger, better than ever. And um, I feel like I'm only getting better and stronger. And I'm the best fighter in the world, and I'm training the best, and I'm fighting the best. Cause I have like the most fight of the night bonuses and stuff. Before you came along, who was the baddest in the UFC? <laughs> Nick Diaz, come on. <laughs> you already knew the answer to that. Tell you the truth, I'm the ticket at 170. Wherever I fight, I make that fight huge. I make that fight big, you know? And it's always a fight I want in person because I like the dude's style. I like how he carries himself. I like how he fights, you know? So I personally want on a personal level. But I started thinking it might not happen, you know? And then thank God it's happening. A guy like Nate, definitely. You don't want to let that guy hang out at any moment. You might be beating him up for four rounds, you take him down, and he's still game, and he wraps around your neck. You can take his legs off, as we've seen, and the guy's just still coming, you know? So he's literally, the best way to describe him is he's a fighting dog, and fighting dog's the only way to take care of him is to put him down, you know? Thank you.
This way. Make sure we get in there. Yeah. Copy, I got him. This way here. Uh, yeah, let's do roads on. Roads on. It's epic. Are you going to present the belt tomorrow? Okay. Is that real? Good to see you again. Good to see you too. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, ladies. Good to see you. Masvidal versus Diaz. Tomorrow night, UFC history will be made on pay-per-view. In the main event, Miami, Florida's Jorge Gamebred Masvidal faces the West Coast gangster Nate Diaz. Here is Joe Rogan. What's up, New York? Welcome to the weigh-ins. And introducing the man who's going to put the belt on the fighters, ladies and gentlemen, The Rock. BMF Championship in the welterweight division. Please welcome Nate Diaz. Official weight 170.5. All that matters, I came with the greatest fighter of all time, Nick Diaz. And I got the Nick Diaz army with me. We're here to take, take motherfuckers out. Nate Diaz, ladies and gentlemen. Nate Diaz and opponents, uh, it's a guy that would have got me hyped. If there was this many people watching and nobody watching, the type of person he is in the ring is what, what motivates me, you know, that I got everybody in the world watching. That's the extra cherry on top, you know, so it makes it amazing. That BMF belt, man, that's the prettiest belt I've ever seen in my motherfucking life, man. I can't lie. I also got Roberto Duran right here to watch me compete. I can't explain to you how excited I am that this man is here to watch me compete, man. The greatest fighter that ever lived in the whole fucking world, man. I'm fucking ecstatic. I'm going to put on a show for you guys in New York. Just check me out tomorrow. Good luck to you, sir. 
Jorge Masvidal, ladies and gentlemen, we will see you all tomorrow night. Dateline, New York. Well, something shifted in Jorge Masvidal over the last two years. Can Diaz march through all those strikes with his pressure like he's done to so many people? He knows what a fight against him means, and he's not going to give that opportunity to everyone. Nick Diaz and Gilbert Melendez are in the building. There is the undisputed UFC welterweight champ, Kamaru Usman. Been a big week for him in New York City. <laughs> what the Rock is cooking. I would like a little more people forget that that's what we tune in for. It's all about real war, and if you can't respect that, you're probably just not a warrior. This guy would find me just as hard if 10 people are watching or the whole world is watching. He still treats it like a fighter. We didn't let the sport, the limelight changes. Oh! Out cold! Nate Diaz is going off! I'm a real fighter. Bring me somebody. They could beat me. This is for the bad part in the game. Man, is this a hard individual to put away? And he said when he came back, he was going to start baptizing people. Two men who are 34 years of age, Nate Diaz, the taller man by one inch. He will have a two-inch reach advantage. Nate Diaz! Game It's a five-round fight for Thurman, who is the baddest mother effer here. Touch gloves if you'd like to. Good luck to both of you. And he will stay on you. Stay on you. And this is where he wants to be, right in this clinch. Once he gets those hands locked. Oh, nice oh, elbow lands. Nate's oh, hurt. Nate's hurt. Oh, oh, got oh. a kick. That elbow landed. And he's not hurt too bad anymore, I don't think. We'll see, though. Oh, oh he's oh, hurt. He got he's it hurt. again. He got oh, it again. Diaz covering up. That elbow cut real deep, right under the Good eye. Good kick to the body there. And Masvidal. Oh, big elbow there. Oh, Diaz right ducked him with a big right. Well, that head kick would have felled lesser men. Diaz covering up. Final 10 seconds. Now the crowd get behind Masvidal. Right. And here we see early in the round, knee to the body, boom, huge elbow. And here's the kick. Right there. Bam. I mean, he finds a way. Something he can do that he hasn't done yet. Oh! oh. Huge right for Perfect. Gabriel! Perfect right and hand. And body shot. Unbelievable. <laughs> Kicked to the stomach and laid down and said, come down. Oh, that's the punch he landed on Till. He's very clever. He does a lot of sneaky stuff in there. Diaz can just keep punching and giving his arm position because he's looking for trips. Big, Big shots. Landed. Big shots oh. to the body. He has been able to stay in this fight, but for how long? He slams him to the ground. And with authority for Masvidal. He has landed a few, but so far the control has been all Masvidal. Nice roll. Peterson roll. Let go of the here. Good scramble. And here's that body kick again for you. I mean, that was as perfect as it gets. And Diaz took that, went down. When you're taking the break is when he's hitting you, okay? So you gotta be ready for him to throw off that break. Talked extensively, as you might expect, about Diaz's durability, so he's not surprised that he hasn't been able to pull away. Oh! oh. Big right hand. Oh! Nice left for Nate. Oh! oh. Nasty kick to the body. Those benefit him the best. He caught him with the right hand there. Oh! Oh! oh. oh. Nice hand oh. Nate. There's oh. that kick to the body again. And that game, that took away the throw attempt. Lost with a big shot from the top. Oh, look at Nate. Stockton slept for good measure. Big ground and pound shots. Wow! Wow! Look at this right hand, everything into it by Masvidal. And here's a nice combo for Nate, right hand. The doctor in to check on the cut of Nate Diaz. 
The doctor's doctor waving it off. No way. Uh, what? Wow. No way. Certainly an anticlimactic end to this BMF title fight, but Masvidal was brilliant tonight. The doctor is not getting the BMF title. No. We gave you three good rounds. Don't be booing me. Don't be booing me. I'll hand out these three pieces in the store to you too, man. It was an honor to call your fight. Jorge Masvidal, ladies and gentlemen. But I'm coming back for your ass, motherfucker. It's always an honor to call your fight. Nate Diaz, ladies and gentlemen. Dana, obviously, this is not how uh, we thought we would be starting these interviews because it was such a successful night. Uh, main event stopped because of lacerations to Nate Diaz. Um, did you get to talk to the New York Athletic Commission at all and hear their reasoning for that stoppage? No, but when I first went into the to, to the octagon and I saw Nate, I was like, they didn't stop the Tyson Fury fight. Tyson Fury had a mm -hmm. nasty cut. They didn't stop that fight. But then I just went back there and saw him. His eyebrow is literally flipped over, and you know what I mean. It's could Nate Diaz have gone on? Nate Diaz is one of the toughest kids in the business. Yes, he could have gone on. Should it have? Probably not. You know what I mean? Probably shouldn't have gone on. It's it's easy for me and a bunch of fans who are sitting around the stands and watching the TV. The kid's eyebrow, not only his eyebrow hanging off like this, he's got another one wide open underneath his eye. So. You know, I, I don't know. When it first happened, I said they didn't stop the Tyson Fury fight, but now that I look at him, probably should have stopped it. Were you surprised when you saw the doctor come in there in the first place? I mean, besides the fact that he called it off. No, I, I thought we were going on because Nate was walking towards me. I, I started walking towards him. And I saw the doctor walk out. I didn't I didn't quite see when the ref waved it off. I was looking my my intentions on Nate. My whole focus is on Nate, so I didn't see Nate. I didn't see the, the ref waved it off, so it came like an extra shock when, when I saw that it wasn't happening. It just, uh, uh, not the way I wanted to win. Not the way I envisioned myself winning a thousand different ways. This was never one of them. Masvidal said in there he'd love to run it back with you. Dana said he doesn't know if that's going to happen right away. Give us your thoughts. I mean, do, do you want to run this back right away, or are there other fights that interest you? Yeah, because, hey, if you're the baddest motherfucker, you going to take that as a win? I mean, you know, it's just like, like Connor when I fought Connor, like, you know, it was a it win. It was fair, fair game. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I wasn't finished. He know that I wasn't finished. You know, so I was ready to rock. And um, that, that's my plan. That's my next move. I would love to run it back. That's, that's the only thing I want to do. And um, that's, that's my full intention to know. But I could already see the fuckery coming. I know how this game works. I give all the rematches and make names for all these people. Uh, I believe I was responsible for this whole shit. I brought the president, <laughs> straight up. What does that timeline look like for you? Because Dana mentioned that you might have to get some plastic surgery done. Obviously, you got the cuts there. You mentioned the knee, like, and it sounds like maybe you're a little mentally fatigued from the back-to-back -back camps. Yeah, 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 for sure. I would like a, like a little more time. Like I said, even the, the last time, like when I beat Connor, like why did they throw me back in so quick? After I fought Pettis, they um, threw me back in quick because maybe they were desperate for a show. You know what I'm saying? Where were they gonna get the show from? You know, they don't got nobody to get no show. Presidents don't presidents don't come for no title fights. They come to fucking bad motherfucker fights. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it, it, you know, fuck the Rock too, man. That motherfucker over here playing me. See him over here smiling with Mad Vidal. Should have had Mike Tyson handing out a belt if anybody. I didn't give a fuck about no belt anyway, but <laughs> he could get it too. Do you know how many stitches you had tonight? I mean, same as always, six or seven or eight. I don't know. Fuck, nigga, I got the most. I got unlimited record for stitches. But you sneeze on me, I believe. So it's not a thing. What's it like being a new dad and also a fighter? Has that changed you at all? Yeah, I don't got nothing to do with it though. This is a fucking fight game. You know what I'm saying? I hate when people be hate holding babies and shit, telling everybody. You know what I'm saying? Don't babies don't need to be watching no fighting. It ain't got nothing to do with it. I don't need no baby pity either. You know what I'm saying? They don't need to know about none of that shit. There's war. All the way war. You got to kill me. Didn't get killed. You know what I'm saying? On the biggest stage, on the biggest thing ever. And it really, it just irritates me. But in the defense for everybody else, I shouldn't have got hit and cut. But if I had the confidence, like I said, to uh, go in there, I could have had more better movement, like with the Pettis fight. And I could have been like, you know, strategic right here, right here for this fight. I'm going to tell you what happened. I was like, I have to stop training about two and a half weeks ago. I like, I just have to stop training. 
<clears throat> and I'm going to make it to this fight. Most motherfuckers would have pulled out, you know what I'm saying? But I'm like, I'm going to make it to this fight. Because you know what? What happened if I didn't make it to the fight? That would be weak. Ain't no bad motherfuckers pull out of fights, you know what I'm saying? The second Conor McGregor fight, I was fucked. He ran for his life now, you know what I'm saying? He ran for his life in the fight, and then he went he went off to uh, to go on the... Uh, to uh, go on the, the uh, well, you know what I'm saying? I can't, I can't be mad at him for going to making millions and millions of dollars. What, you know what I'm saying? So that, that's, that could be justified like that. I'm like, okay, you had to do what you had to do. But me as a fighter, I can't live with that. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, if, if, if I got choked out on my face and it came back and won a decision, that doesn't justify it for me. I have to beat you. You know what I'm saying? And that's just like this fight. I'm like, if you, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna come get all my hundreds of million dollars after I finish, uh, cause you killed me. So that's how I feel about this one. Also, you mentioned before that uh, The Rock can get it as well. What exactly did you mean by that? What was it that The Rock did? Nigga, he's on that side, fuck him. I'm on the West Coast side. Mike Tyson should have been here anyway. He's the baddest man on the planet, right? He should have been the one. He should have been the one over here. Uh, I'm over here with her on The Rock, huh? <laughs> <laughs> You guys caught me under under a bad bad time, but you know what I'm saying. The Rock's cool. I like ballers. I like ballers. You know what I'm saying. But he picked the wrong side. He picked another side so he could get it too. He could get his ass whipped too, straight up. With all due respect, he could get it too. Five, six, seven, however many stitches you're not sure about. How bad is the upper brow? Because Dana was like, yeah, it looked like it was hanging off. It was He's full of it. Always full of it. But when he said that to me, I looked at my boy and I was like, it's the same as the same as every cut. It's the same thing as every mm. cut. This I have the same cut every time. After I lost that, I, I mean, fought Pettis, I went back and trained like a week later and I split it right back open. You know what I'm saying? Like halfway, I was like, damn, this thing always just... This thing uh, cuts right back open every time. And then, and then when he said that to me, he said, I look like you're... Like your eyeball is gonna fall out. I don't like that. Uh, my homie, I like, I like, hey, doing do thing. Look, is my eyeball about to fall out? And he's like, no, it's the same like last time. I like, man, this dude's being over dramatic about it. So that's what he does, though. And he goes like, oh man, I think that uh, he didn't stand a chance in there, man. They, it's good they stopped doing. They didn't. Let me fight you, Ben and Damon. <laughs>